The member for Newmarket Aurora. Thank you, Speaker. Uh, as a representative for the riding of Newmarket Aurora, uh, I am compelled to express my strong opposition to Bill 79. I do support uh, the member's intent with regard to his emphasis on conservation and alternative energy sources as uh, set out in Section 3 of the bill. But had the member consulted with me, who represents some 50 percent of the population of the targeted mun municipalities referenced in the bill, I would have had some questions for the honourable member. First, what does the honourable member know about York Region's growth plan and the resulting future demands on electricity supply and distribution in the region? Second, is the member aware that the issue of Northern York Region's electricity supply has been a matter of extensive debate and the Northern York Region Working Group identified the construction of a peaking plant as the preferred solution over enhanced transmission? Third, given that the supply of electricity during high-cost, high-demand periods in Northern York Region's most urgent need, on what technical advice does the Honourable Member base the 30 megawatt restriction as set out in Section 2 of his proposed bill? And on the basis of what expertise does he presume to prescribe these technical specifications? Fourth, is the Honourable Member aware of the Minister's order that directs the OPA to in fact proceed with the procurement of 350 megawatts of new gas-fired electricity generation? And has he informed himself of the reasons given by the Minister for the size of the plant? Fifth, why would the Honourable Member take it upon himself to restrict by legislation the very scope within which highly professional and specialized individuals in the energy sector have been asked to deliver and implement a plan that will ensure a secure and reliable supply of electricity for Northern York Region. And finally, I would ask the Honourable Member, would he impose similar legislation on his Toronto constituency, knowing that it would impose unrealistic restrictions on a process intended to secure a reliable supply of electricity and potentially destabilize the local economy and threaten his constituents' quality of life. Speaker, I want to address these questions for the purpose of clarifying the issue for Mr. Tabins and honorable members. Most important, I trust that constituents who are following this debate will get a better understanding of the facts as they relate to this issue and the reason for my opposition to the bill. Let me clarify, first of all, another bit of misinformation that Mr. Tavins has given the House today. There is no identification of a site. No such decision has been made. In fact, there are three sites in King that are still in play. There's one in Aurora. There's one in East Gwillimbury. So I don't know where Mr. Tavins is getting his information. Speaker, in 2005, the Northern York Region Working Group, consisting of representatives from the Ontario Power Authority, municipal officials, local electric utility representatives, and concerned citizens, confirmed that there was an urgent need to find both a short and long-term solution. The Working Group endorsed the following three-pronged strategy. First, the aggressive promotion of energy conservation and demand management. Second, the installation of a new transformer station at Holland Junction and third, a new gas-fired power plant in Northern York Region. I supported the working group's conclusions at the time and on a number of occasions in this House encouraged and urged the Minister of Energy to get on with the implementation. I can report today that the construction has started on the new transformer station at the Holland Junction in King this past spring and that an energy conservation and demand management program are being implemented with some success. In fact, the OPA has contracted for up to 30 megawatts of demand response in Northern York Region, and a number of conservation programs are being delivered by the local distributors. I fully support placing more emphasis on conservation and demand management. But, Speaker, it must be recognized that while these measures can, in fact, reduce the overall demand, they cannot guarantee that adequate supply will be available to meet the reliability criteria. And that's why the construction of a new peaking plant is imperative to ensure a reliable and secure source of energy for Northern York Region. Now, there's some debate about the reliability of the 3% uh, per annum load growth rate that has been used to determine demand. Speaker, whether it's 2% or 3%, 
The reality is that York Region is one of the fastest growing regions in this country. And we know that we need a reliable supply of electricity. Of significance, however, is the fact that the accuracy of those projections became considerably less important with the Minister of Energy's order of January 31st of this year. That order expressly states, and I want to quote for the record, in addition to relieving local supply inadequacy, it is also expected that the new facility be capable of contributing to the province's overall need for gas-fired peaking plant capacity, end of quote. Speaker, Mr. Tabins knows full well that Ontario will have to refurbish or replace 25,000 megawatts of generating capacity over the next 20 years. That represents more than 80% of Ontario's current capacity of approximately 35,000 megawatts. To say we face a major challenge on the security of energy supply is an understatement. And there is not a community in this province, Speaker, that can afford to ignore it or refuse to be part of the solution. And while the generating facility proposed for Northern York Region is first and foremost required for our needs, the excess capacity ordered by the Minister is necessary to support the broader provincial need for peaking capacity. Not only do I support this plan, I'm convinced that my constituents, when they get the full context of the information, will support it as well. I will once again say what I said to the Minister of Energy in May of this year. I support the uh, construction of the peaking plant, but the residents must be consulted and properly informed of the process and the rationale for determining the size, the type, and location of the plant. And that's why I call on the Minister yet one more time to reconstitute the working group, include all municipalities in that process, and direct the OPA to ensure that the appropriate information, full disclosure, is given to the people of York Region so that they can understand it and we can get on with this project in full confidence. Thank you, Speaker.